Okay, I will start again. So, uh, my name is Sayed Sono. First of all, I would like to thank all the attendees for attending this free webinar. So, and also I would like to thank India Mentor and Gaurav Kumar Arora for arranging this GoTo meeting and for uh, making this event. So, in this uh, webinar, we will see how to create a simple ASP.NET MVC web application using AngularJS with the Entity Framework and Web API. So, uh, about me. So, my name is Syed Sano. I am from Madurai, Tamil Nadu, India. I am a Microsoft MVP, Code Project MVP, CSAP Corner MVP, and I have 10 plus years of experience as a software engineer. So, currently I am working as a senior software engineer at GMAC Solution, Seoul, South Korea. So, so what we need to be installed in our computer to use our MVC application is we need a Visual Studio 2015 and SQL Server 2014. So agenda in this uh, webinar we will learn introduction to MVC, introduction to AngularJS, and introduction to SQL Server and Web API and Entity Framework. And finally we will be creating a simple demo application for crude using MVC, AngularJS, Web API and Entity Framework with our SQL Server database. So if you have any questions, we can be asked at the end of this session. So first we concentrate on uh, the how to continue our session now. So MVC is start for uh, model view and controller. So actually whenever the user interacts, it will be uh, the controller will be first execute and it will be uh, opening our view to present our data. So the controller will be interact with both model and the view. So model is used to store the data to the database and to retrieve the data to de from the database to our view. So in the view, finally, we will be seeing our output results. So this is the pattern of the model view controller. And next one, AngularJS. So AngularJS is a JavaScript framework. So it will be used to bind the data from our uh, controller to display in our HTML page. So it is a purely 100% JavaScript. And in AngularJS, we are, there are three main components we will be using. is the ng-app, ng-model, and the ng-bind. So in the ng-app is to uh, store the data from our controller to our present to in our HTML page. So these are all the components we will be using in the AngularJS, like data binding, providers, validators, and models and all. So first we will see a simple program to make our Angular JS. So to data bind, here we will be using to bind the data, we use that ng model and the ng bind. So ng model, if we have a, one input box, we will see our output from our program. So here I have made a simple AngularJS program. So first to bind the data. So here first we will be using the AngularJS script to be executed in our HTML page. And here we have the ng model. So in the in input box we give this ng model. So whenever the user type some data in the input box, we will be binding in our HTML page. So now we see the output here. So here we can see we have a text box and we have initially we display the message as hello. So here we give some text. It will be automatically binded here. So this is to, to bind the data in AngularJS. We will be using this ng model and the ng bind. And next one in AngularJS, we have the ng repeat. So repeat is nothing but to display the data from uh, uh, first to the last. It is like our looping. So looping the data and display one by one to our HTML page. So here we have a sample program for our ng repeat. So here we can see uh, we use the ng repeat and in uh, so here we have some numbers from 1 to 10 and we have another uh, array like a name from some group of names. So we using this ng repeat, we display the numbers one by one and also we display the names one by one here. So here you can see that that group of 10 numbers was being displayed in the order. 
and also we display the names in the order. So here, uh, for displaying the data repeatedly, we will be using this ng repeat in Angular JS. And our next one we have is the filter. So next one we have in Angular JS we have the filter. Filter to uh, if we have some group of data and we need to display only some starting letter with uh, data, we will be using the filter. So here we can see that. So here we can some array of data. So if we want to display only the starting letters from A, if we type here, we can see that only AF letters will be displayed in this array. So here we are using the AngularJS filter. So here we can see that in the ng uh, filter, first we in init. ng init is like our initialization. Here we give some array of names. So in these names, we will be displaying by using the ng repeat. Here we have ng repeat. So we will be displaying all these names one by one. And next one in AngularJS, we have a filter. Filter is now, if we have what text box. And whenever user enters some text, we display the data by this filter. So here in output, we can see that we display all the data. And here we have a text box. If I enter yes, I display the data only it start from the yes. So to filter this in AngularJS, we use this filter. And also here we have used the order by. So to display the data in order or in ascending order or in the descending order. So next in AngularJS, we have main is like a scope. So here we have initially we have entered all the group of names using the ng init. So next one, we need to store this data in our AngularJS controller and we bind this data to our HTML. So to store the data from our controller, we use the scope. Scope is an object. So these are all some basic things uh, we need to be know in our AngularJS. And next one. So Next is the database. I think so you all know more about the database. Database is the database management system is a software, group of software. So it will be used to store our data uh, which the user has been inputted. So in database management system softwares, we have like a SQL server, Oracle, MySQL and etc. So now we will be using in our application SQL server as the database to store and retrieve the data. And next one, in this sample application, we will be using the web API. So API is the application programming interface. It is to uh, interact from the database and to display the data in the browsers, mobiles, or any other places. So it will it supports like uh, Android, uh, Windows, or Apple, or any browsers like that. So that is the main advantage of the web API. And in web API, we have the four main methods called the get, post, put, and delete. So get to get select the data and to display in our uh, HTML page. Post to insert the data to the database. And put is used for update the data. And delete is to delete the data from the database. So for this, we will be using a web API. And next one, we have been using the entity framework in our application. So entity framework is an object relational mapper. So it makes our uh, programming very easy. So programmer no need to write for a insert, update and all like that. So if we use the entity framework, it will automatically create a code for us and it is very simple and easy to use for the programmers. So it supports the one-to-one, -one, one to many and many-to-many -many relationships and also supports use for the crude operations like create, read, update and delete. So now we see how to create a simple application using all these combinations. Now Excel Server 2014, ASP.NET, MVC, Entity Framework, Web API, and AngularJS. So first, first of all, to create a web application, we create our database and table to be stored in our database and to retrieve the data from the database. And in this demo application, we will, we will be creating a
So I have already write, write a script to create the database. So here we will be creating a database name called the student DB and we will be creating a sample table to be inserted and to be retrieved from the database. So we in create a table in this student database and our table name is student master and we have a field like student ID, student name, email, phone and address. So we first insert some sample data into this uh, database. Now to insert like uh, we have inserted three records. So if we select this table, we can see that we have already we have three records has been inserted in our sample table. And in this demo program, I will be using the store procedure. So the benefit of the store procedure is we can write multiple query in one procedure and we can execute at one time. So that is the main advantage of using the store procedure. So I have created a four main store procedure. One is to select and we select the data from our student table to display it on our uh, MVC application. And next procedure was being used to insert. It was been created to insert the student record into our database. So first I check for the student name is exist or not. If it is not exist, then we will be insert into our database. And next one we have is to update. To update the student record, we are be using the update procedure. And next we have delete procedure. So I have already created this database and procedures in, in my database. And next, after creating this database table and procedure, we will start creating our web application, MVC web application. So here, so to create a web MVC application, we open uh, Visual Studio 2015 and we go click our new project. And here we can see the templates. So from the templates, we select web and here we select our ASP.NET web application. So this uh, webinar we will be focusing on only on the MVC application. So we have selected ASP.NET web application and we select our path. We select our uh, pro project path and we give some uh, name for the project. So here we can see that we have been selecting the MVC and we are using the web API. So we select the web API from here and we click OK. So first step we have created our database and tables and procedure. So next, proceed, next step is to create our MVC web application. So now we have created one a web application. So after creating this, after creating a web application, First, we create an entity framework to connect to our database and to store and to and retrieve the data from the database. We will be using the entity framework here. So now our new web application has been created. By default, we can see all this. So it is a model view controller application. Here we can see controller view and models. So we will see all one by one. So first uh, step is to create our entity framework. To create an entity framework, we right click our project and click add and we click new item. So here we can see the uh, visual CSA code, data and all. So to create a entity framework, we click on data and here we can see ADO.NET entity data model. So here we go name us. So we give the name as student model for this ADO entity and we click add. So next we select the EF designer from database. We click next and we connect to our database. First we need to connect to our database. So we click the new connection and here uh, we connect to our database. And we, we select Windows authentication or SQL server authentication. We give the password. So 
So next one is we select our database. So our database is here, student DB. We select our database and click OK. So here we have the entity name is the student DB entity. We click next. Here we can see that our database was being selected as the student database. We have the table called student master which we have been created here initially in our uh, database. So we will be selecting this table and we will be selecting our procedures. So we have already created four procedures. So student delete, insert, select and update. We are been using for the crude application. So we select all the procedure and we click finish. So first step, we created a database and tables procedure and next we create a MVC web application. And after that, we have been completed this entity framework. And next one, we will be creating a web API. So after our entity uh, was been created, we will be creating our web API controller. To create a web API, we right click from our controllers and we click add controller. In controller here, we, we are be using the web API controller. So we select web API to controller and we click add. So here we give our controller name, we give as students controller. I have already created uh, uh, one sample, so I will be using the same code here and I will explain you one by one. So here we have created our student's web API controller. So in this controller, uh, in this controller we create an object for our uh, entity, uh, entity which we created. So we have created the student model as the entity and uh, we have students DB entities here we create object for that. So using this we will be connect to our database and next one here we will be using uh, our uh, procedure. We already have a select procedure and we have already insert procedure and we have update and delete. So first one we use the get method to select the data and here next one we have a insert now here I will be using all the get method. Uh, I have used only all the get method because in my procedure I, what I do is after insert I will be displaying the uh, message as inserted or not. So I will be using the select and after update I will be using the select method and after delete I will be using the select method. So here for all I will be using only the get method. To, uh, to insert, update, delete and all I have used only the select method. So here uh, first we give the select and next one to insert and we pass our parameter which should be inserted in our database and here we pass our parameter to be updated in our database. So same like that for delete. So uh, we now we have created our web API entity framework. So next uh, part will be to create our AngularJS. So first to create the AngularJS, we right click, we need to add the AngularJS scripting to be uh, insert, uh, loaded in our application to run our AngularJS program. For this we click manage a new zip packages and from browse we select AngularJS. So in this demo I have been using the version called uh, 1.5.8 so we select that one and we click install it will take few seconds to be installed the packages in our uh, application
So we need to wait for a few seconds. Uh, the Angular JS will be loaded to our application. So once it finished, we also uh, install the Angular code. So once it has been created, uh, now we need to create a new folder for our Angular JS. In that folder, we will be adding our Angular JS controller. So now we have installed that. So after this, uh, to create our AngularJS controller from our solution, we can select the script folder. So we create one new folder to create our Angular controller. So for that, first we create one folder called my, my Angular. So you can be uh, name it as anything. So this is just a folder name. You can give any name over here. And here we will be adding our AngularJS controller. To add our AngularJS controller, we click add here new item and we select web and from here we select our AngularJS controller. We click add. So I have already written a coding for this. So I will be using that one. Uh, Okay, so I have been using, I will tell you all this coding one by one. So now we have, uh, we have written the complete coding for performing our crude operation using AngularJS. And next one is we have a view. So after creating this AngularJS in our view, we need to display the data. So to display the data, we in a view HTML part, we bind the result from our AngularJS controller in our HTML page. So for that, in so we select the view, and here in home index, this is our main page. So in this main page, we will be binding our uh, output, and we display the result from here. So when we run this application. You can see that our uh, student details will be displayed in our main page. So we wait for a few seconds, so it will be loaded in our main page. So now we can see that here uh, in this page, we will be displaying the data from our database in our main view page. So actually uh, the images are missing. So here we can see that same one. So what I do is from our AngularJS controller, we will be select the data from our web using our web API and we bind the final result in our view page. So here we have add, we can add a new student, we can search for the student and we can also edit the student detail and also we can delete the student. So now first I will do the demo and then I will in code part I will explain what I have done in the AngularJS controller and in our HTML view page. So first we will see a simple demo to add a new student. So we give some email address. Okay. So if you click the save, sorry, I have stopped this application which was been running initially. So now I run my another program.
Okay, now we add a new student here. We click save item. When we click, we can see the message as the data has been inserted in our database. We click OK. We can see that new record has been inserted. And we can also edit this and also we can delete this. If we want to search, we click on search button. We can see that we, we have been using the, our AngularJS controller over here to display the data by this search criteria. And also if we click empty and if we click search, it will display all the data. So for this in our procedure, what I have did is we have a select procedure. The data will be by uh, displayed using this select procedure. In select query, I will be using select uh, from this table name. In where condition, I have used like uh, using the like. So like using, I have used the percentage, which means if it is the data uh, string is empty, it will display all the record. And if it has some character, it will display from the starting character. So for that, I have used the like in our select query. So here we can see that if I click A, F, it will display the data starting from this one. So to edit the record, we click edit and we can also do some changes. If you click save, you can see the message as updated. And we can also do the delete. If you click on delete, we ask the confirmation, are you sure you want to delete the data? If we click on OK, we delete the data from our database. So we can see the record has been deleted. So in this now, we have did all the operations in our AngularJS controller. So I will explain you one by one in Angular controller what we have did. So in Angular controller, we will be using our ng app. So next we using the controller. So we have given the Angular app control app name and the controller name. And we are using the scope and HTTP to bind the data and to get the data. First we declare all our variables which need to be used here. And we have uh, some method. Uh, this is like a global method. So whenever we run our application, we display by default, we display all the student details. For this, we have been using the global method over here. We give the name. And in this method, we pass uh, two parameter. So from the, we have two text box. For the search criteria, we will be using these parameters. And here we have used our HTTP get method to get the data from our API. And when we create our Angular controller, API controller, we have, uh, so uh, this is our get method. And also for insert, we use the method name as insert student. And also we have a method as update student. And for delete, we have a method name as delete student. So in our controller, AngularJS controller, we use this API slash this method name. So first default is our get method. So for, for that, we don't need to give the get over here. So it is to get the data and to bind the result over here. So if I, I have a, another thing is now uh, in our uh, application, I when I click add, I will be displaying this uh, one table record. And if I click on edit, it, I will be displaying another table record. So to show and hide, what I will do is I will be using this uh, object to show the table and to hide the table. By default, I will be displaying the student table, which will be uh, here. We can see when we run the application, we display only one table to display our result. When we click on the add new button, we, we will be showing the hidden another table to add a new record. So for that, we create an object over here like show and hide, true or false. So in each click, we will be showing and hiding our table record, TR. So here we can see that. So this is our main HTML page. In this HTML page, first we use the ng app. So our app name is here, REST client module. So we will be using this name in our HTML page. And next one is our Angular controller. So the Angular controller name we have given as AngularJS student controller. So in our body, we will be using this AngularJS controller. 
and next one uh, in table first we bind the data and here in table tr you can see that i have used the ng so so ng so is to so and hide some uh, element of html element so we are uh, using this so item to hide and so our table tr so here when we click on add new item we display the table record over here so for this we will be using this ng so and next one after this this is to select the data i will use this two method and next one is to search when when the user click on the search button we will be using this method search student details so here you can see that in our html page first we create our uh, for searching we have added one input text box and also we have added input text box this is for the student name and for the email and we have one button over here so this is the search for for searching and when we click the search button we will be calling this here we use the angular js click event so whenever we click this one we call the search student details so in this method we pass this two parameter the scope dot student name and the scope dot email is this our text box so text box model name we will be using this to bind and display the record uh, automatically and here we pass this parameter to search the data uh, same like this when we click on add new button So here you can see that in add new button, when we click and add new student detail, we will be calling the so student detail this method. In this method, we will be hiding and showing our table tr. So here we can see that in this tr, this is this tr is to so and hide our uh, new record to add a new record. We'll be using this so so student day add. So here when we click that one we will be making this one as true if you make it as true then by default the so uh, add this one the so student add will be as the fa false it will be set as the false when we click on this i will make it as a true if i make it as a true it will be automatically displayed in our main html page so this is to add a new student and same like this next one we have edit so when we click on the edit button when we click on the edit button we display the record in our edit area for this in our edit click button so first i get the data from our record so here we have uh, if i click on this edit if i click on the first row edit button so we have already a data from the database so this data will i will be bind to our text box in our edit area so to bind that i will be passing this one in our from our html page we have the edit delete all so when the user click on the edit button i will call the student edit method in this method i will pass all the record which has student id name email phone number and address and all so in our controller in our uh, angular controller i will be binding this to our uh, text box so and also i will be enable the table row should be display so whenever the user click on this first i will bind all this data to our text box and then i will show the edit area over here so this is a spa, spa application it is a single page application which means we have we have been doing all edit insert update all in our one page so here we using the so and hide and we pass our parameter here and next one is to when we click the user click on the delete so whenever the user click on the delete button we call the student delete method so in this method we pass our student id 
to our web API. So here our web API controller name to delete here we use the delete student. So here we pass our parameter as the student ID. So in our delete query we will be using this delete from our table name and we use by condition by the student ID. So if I give the ID as two, the two record will be deleted from our database. So for this, we call this delete method using our web API. Once the data has been deleted, we give the message as data was been deleted from our database. So same like that, next we have the for edit and save. Here if we have the save button, this button we will be using for both for the new add a new item and also for a edit item. So if we see that now example when I click and add new student detail so here I will be set the student ID as 0. So 0 we have we don't have any record with the student ID as a 0. So for initially I will be using this as the default. Whenever we create a project we no need to show this student ID but for your easy understanding here I am displaying the student ID over here and we can uh, add a new record for this and we click the save item and for edit when I click the edit button here we can see first I will display the student ID and I will edit this record by this student ID and so for this in our uh, AngularJS controller in save method I will check the student ID is 0. If it is 0 then I call the insert method and if the ID is not equal to 0 then I will call the update method to update our data in our database. So uh, this is a simple crude application which was been created uh, using the AngularJS and uh, model view controller MVC. So I think uh, if you have any questions you can ask me now and if you need the source code of this uh, program and also if you need this presentation you can send me a mail I can send you the details to you to you by your mail. Do you have any questions? Hello. Shanu, please check the question panel. There are a lot of questions for you. Uh, where is the question panel? Uh, you must be prompted with the hand sign. Or you can see in under chat window. Uh, in under chat window, I didn't see. Yeah, I have questions. There. Uh, what I suggest if it is Angular 2 is available, I start with Angular JS or Angular 2. Uh, <laughs> this is very tricky question because now Angular 2 is here and I hear that within March end there will be Angular 4 also will be releasing. So it, it is it will be good to learn Angular JS and Angular 2 and we need to be update with whatever we have. So we cannot fix in one one technology or anything like that in the current situation. So we have to be keep on update. It is good to learn anything. So first we started with Angular JS. It is good. So now in Angular 2 we have a lot more things, lot a lot of advantages in that. So it will be good to learn Angular 2 and also uh, 
uh, I will tell only one thing. So the learning is is up to our limit. But in the end of the day, the requirement is based on our office or our working area. So in our working area, what they need, we need to work on that. But apart from that, we need to be keep on update with all the new technologies. So that is my suggestion. So what we have planned is today we start with the MVC and Angular JS, and we have also planned next we will come back with the ASP.NET Core, and also we will come back with a Angular 2. So I will be uh, explaining all the Angular 2 with ASP.NET Core in my next session. Uh, so I think this is fine for your question, and suggest to proceed with uh, yeah. Is this How much it is painful to migrate from Angular JS to Angular 2? Uh, it, it, it is very hard only. I know that, but uh, we have to do that. If uh, it is depend on our requirement only. So if our requirement is we need to do with Angular 2, then we have to do the migration. Uh, source code. Uh, I will be say uh, you can uh, uh, you can ask me in my mail. I will I can send you my the source code, and also uh, I will send you the presentation if you need it. Yeah, source code. I, I you can you can ask me. Uh, I will send you by my email. Okay, uh, my, my email is here. I think so. Uh, you all might know that. So this is my email ID, Syed Sonu MCIN at gmail dot com. So you can ask me the source code and the presentation. I can send you both it to your mail ID. Route and route UI route. It is be using for the routing uh, AGS. So if you need more detail, you can ping me in my Facebook, and I will explain you in more better way. Kavra, uh, is that be fine if I send the the source code and email uh, by my mail, or shall I give it to you? You can give it to the other members. So what do you think about that? Yeah, either way is fine. Uh, generally, we put our code on GitHub or any other repository, so members can download from there. Okay, okay, that will be fine. Yes. So then uh, I will send you my the source code and this presentation also, so we can do with that. Yeah, that will be good. Okay. Uh, is this a series of webinar? So it is up to you. The if you all want to more webinar, we will do. Me and Gaurav can do together for you all. And also we have a plan for and we can make another webinar for ASP.NET Core and with Angular 2. So I think so. It will be more helpful for all. So it is a new latest technology. So this is our first starting. So we started with the MVC and Angular JS for today. Uh, so my current project is in MVC, Angular JS, and due to requirement, we need to go with ASP.NET Core plus Angular 2. So what steps do we need to follow? Uh, if it, if it, it is uh, in my opinion, uh, it is good to hold the ASP.NET Core and Angular 2 project for now. But if uh, your company is required, you can start with that uh, because Angular uh, ASP.NET Core is just a, it was been uh, changing a lot from the from this six month. And also, it will be updated. Keep updated. So uh, it is good to wait for uh, uh, six more months to migrate to the ASP.NET Core. That is my personal opinion. So I think so. You can wait for a few more days, and uh, you can start with ASP.NET Core and Angular 2 applications. But if it is the requirement, you need to work with Angular 2 and ASP.NET Core. It is a good. We can go with that. So it is. It is all depend on our company requirement. If we have a requirement, we need to adapt with that.
Uh, I am new guy and want to start my own blog. Any social special suggestions for you? It is good to start with a blog. I always suggest to everyone that so whatever you learn, you start teaching to others. If you start teaching to others, you can learn more. So that that is the best way to learn more. So it is good to start your own blog. There are a lot of ways to start your own blog. Own blog. So it is very good. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. I will take one session for TypeScript. AGS, thank you for joining today. Yeah, sure. You can mail me and also uh, you can chat me anytime in my Facebook. So I will be uh, uh, many people have been asking many questions using the Facebook. So you can easily reach me anytime. I will do my best for all you. Uh, I am not sure about that. So you have to tell. So first of all, tell me, if, do you all like this uh, demo and do you all feel this uh, really helpful? If it's so, we can continue more and we can do all for you. So we are all working only for you all. If you have any suggestions or feedback, you can uh, always reach to me and also you can tell to Gaurav Kumar Arora to make our webinar a more better way for you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, this is very good question. Uh, for students, I love to teach the students. Uh, actually, uh, if India Mentor is arranging any event for this and uh, like a webinar, I will do my full support for that. Uh, I, today's the students are, they are the future of tomorrow. So uh, I believe on that. So it will be good to start with the students. So it is our responsible. So what I think is uh, the teaching to the student is the base. If you start with the students, after they completing the college, they know what to do and how to do. So we need to guide them. It is our responsible. And it is a very good question. And thank you for asking Mukat uh, ji. AGS, I will explain you in the chat. No, no, it is not compulsory to use the web API. Uh, but if you if you if you have a, like a multi-platform, if you want to focus on the mobile and also you have to uh, focus on different uh, browsers and also you have to be uh, focus on different platform, then you can go with web API. If it is not, it is not mandatory to use the web API. So that is the main difference. No, no, not at all. So it is not like that. It is not uh, mandatory to use the web API. As I said, uh, it is easy to use the web API to bind the data in our AngularJS. And also another thing is if you go with multi-platform and mobile and all, in that case, we need the web API. Uh, is there any other questions? That's all. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that. Thank you for that.
yeah sure thank you is there any if you have any other questions you can just uh, ping me in facebook or you can drop me a mail or whatever so uh, i will be keep contributing from my side and i will be focusing on uh, both things to be for presenting to you all so i need all your support and all and if you find any difficulties and uh, if you have any feedback in the session you can just stay with me or gaurav kumar arora any time so we will be uh, try to make more better for you all Kaurav uh, Kumar, I, I think, uh, is there any other questions or anything? Hello? Thank you all. Yeah, yeah. Is there any other questions or anything? Uh, it looks like you have already answered all the questions. Okay. So let's wait for few seconds if other one having any kind of question. Otherwise, you can conclude if you're done. Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. Thank you all for joining today, and uh, please uh, give your few valuable feedback. Uh, so, how do you feel? And if you find anything difficult, you can reach me or Gaurav Kumar Arora any time. So we will we are here to support you all any time. so apart from that uh, this uh, learning if you have any uh, any other questions you can be feel free to answer to that so i am also writing some more blog for how to write article and how to do uh, things like that so if you have any questions you can all free, feel free to ask me and the uh, as i told that the source code and the presentation uh, you can ask me by mail and also give i will give the source code and the presentation to gaurav kumar arora he will also upload it to uh, his uh, jit pad and he will give all you the path you can download from there also Uh, yes i think so uh, i didn't find more questions over here so we can stop today uh, let's see, let we all see in a, another session
hope you all like that so if you have any feedback you can just send me thank you all signing off now thank you thanks shanu okay have a great weekend okay okay bye. thank you thanks. okay bye